Located on the northwestern part of Luzon, Ilocos Norte is a coastal province that takes pride in its great historical past. Even before the Spaniards came to the Philippines, the coastal plains were already known as Ilocos. When you say I, it's a prefix meaning for people from. Loco or loc means lowland. So when you say Iloco, complete na yung Iloco na yan, people from the lowland. In 1591, right after Spain took over Manila, galleon ships headed north and discovered Ilocos. This place became a hub for Spanish trading ships that transport goods to China. The region was later called Ilocos. After more than 400 years, Ilocos Norte never lost its old world charm. Its rugged beauty remains to be a favorite tourist destination among local and foreign travelers. You were saying about the beauty of Ilocos. No? Innate na yan eh. Even before the Spaniards came, the Ilocos provinces or the Ilocos region was already a beautiful place to visit. The people are lured to our place not only because of the modern things that we have, but because of the innate quality of Ilocos. Time seems to stand still for visitors enamored by the old world charm of Ilocos Norte. The Pauay Church, named UNESCO Heritage Site in 1993, is just one of many centuries-old Baroque churches and colonial Spanish structures in this northern province. Aside from the old churches, another Ilocos Norte tourism centerpiece is the Malacanang of the North. A former residence of the Marcoses, the Grand House showcases memorabilia from the first family. The province has an arid and hardly fertile terrain, but the hard-working Ilocanos turned Ilocos into an abundant land. The picturesque desert of Pauay sand dunes offers an exhilarating 4x4 ride and sandboarding activities. No Ilocano trip is complete without a trip to another Ilocos pride. Pagudbud boasts of clean white sand beaches and aquamarine green waters. A gastronomic feast on Ilocos' unique cuisine is a good ending to any itinerary. A place where rich cultural history and natural wonders collide, Ilocos Norte is always worth a visit. One thing about Ilocos Norte now, the, the people of Ilocos Norte and Ilocosur have imbibed in themselves the thinking that we are already learning to, to become a tourist destination. So we are now leaning towards entertaining people coming here dahil nagiging ano na kami, tourism oriented. Can Ilocos Norte successfully marry old and new without losing its soul? Today, we get the answers from a woman who is leading Ilocos Norte towards Paspas Duras, or speedy progress. Wonderful to have you on News Cafe, Governor Amy Marcos. Thanks. Hi. So, economically, um, tourism has been a big driver for Ilo uh, Ilocos Norte. Can you tell us what you did exactly to really um, change things around? I got really lucky. So I arranged to get really lucky with a lot of prayer, La Virgen Milagrosa. And the truth is I know nothing about tourism. So nakachamba lang kami. The intention was to get really BPOs, was to get call centers. But as you know, there was a recession. There was a great hesitation to move out of Manila. There were uh, some bad experiences with going out of town because of the limit in the talent pool. And so... Medyo hirap pa rin kami, but uh, a few BPOs have located, so we're very happy about that. We really need to generate jobs. Well, Lawag has been named the number one tourist destination in Region 1, no? Is that so? Number 10 uh, region in the, one the Philippines. Okay. But number 10 yeah. in the Philippines, so. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we've been really lucky, as, as I said um, earlier. We started out with Pawai Kumakawai because we mm -hmm. figured that would be the linchpin for everything. Dahil uh, Pawai has pretty much everything 
that we can think of. It's got the Pauai Lake, which is almost 500 hectares large, and you can do all sorts of sports. You can do the regatta and kayaking and rowing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it's also got the sand dunes where you can do all the sandboarding, yeah. the death-defying 4x4 yeah. with no safety features. No, hindi mo ganun kagrabe, pero slightly. It's fun, though. And you have Malacanang of the North, so that has sort of some sentimental history. It's part of the Marcos Trail. Pagkatapos, yeah. it has, of course, uh, the golf course and Pauai Church. Right. So Pauai Church is the uh, World Heritage Site of yeah. UNESCO. So yeah. that seems to be a draw. It still is for the pilgrimages right. and for all the heritage. So you've got tourism. everything. You have rich culture, history. Yeah, I think we don't have a volcano. <laughs> but I always tell them that we've you got are the, the beach, volcano. we've got food, we've got um, lots of heritage, mm. we've got wind and sand sports. The volcano's on its way, the <laughs> governor's building it. <laughs> well, tell us about this Johnny Moon campaign, very catchy campaign. Oh, Johnny Moon, yes. It's sort of really confused. You have all these uh, ADHD sort of <laughs> assemblage of images. It's a bit of a confusion because of the mustache. Mm. Everyone's got a mustache here. So we started with that because of Johnny Moon, hashtag for Juan Luna, the first global Pinoy. Uh, because he was, after all, in the 19th century, the Filipino, the only Indio at that time to be right. displayed in the Louvre, who kept winning all the art contests. So we've sort of got an art tradition, and we've pegged that on, uh, on uh, the uh, tourism the... campaign. Yeah, there you go. go. Oh my god. That's goodness. what we see going around. I, I love don't know it. about that. Diba? Yeah. Bagay ba? Hindi. Bagay <laughs> maganda pa rin. Ako na <laughs> Pero ayos lang. Ayun, alag so alag kid. Very catchy. Johnny Moon, the one Luna <laughs> oh. uh, push. And it's yeah. uh, really caught fire with a lot of the kids. We have a uh, digital media uh, festival, which is quite fun. Yeah. Uh, gobbing. Geeks mm. on the beach. It's it's uh, very very uh, enjoyable. What happens? So if, I have a, yeah. a background in animation and film, yes. so yeah. it's something I'm really comfortable with, and yeah. it's it's a natural. But at the same time, uh, we've got the sports kids doing what yes. they're doing, the windsurfer boys, and a lot of the sandboarders. So mm -hmm. it's good fun. In 2012, you launched the La Milagrosa Festival. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, the patron saint of the province is La Virgen Milagrosa. I'm very much against. Uh, generating this uh, fake sort of festivals just to uh, attract tourists. It has to be meaningful to the locals as well. That's why Sinulog, for example, is unbeatable because it really derives from uh, local history. And in our case, we have a very rich uh, legacy from La Virgen Milagrosa. She came over during the Japanese persecutions and insisted on coming to Ilocos Norte. Apparently, she was intended for some other province, some other parish, but she made her way here. Yeah. So uh, she's a great Milagrosa <laughs> peg for the intrepid Ilocana. It's, yeah. uh, it really works, a pioneering uh, lady. And we have lots of them all over the world because the La Virgen Milagrosa is also a perfect peg for what the province lives on, which mm. is the uh, migrant workers. We yes. have a huge migrant population. Uh, some of them are Balikbayan. They've actually settled overseas in the United States, obviously in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, there are so many of them. Lahat kami may kamag-anak doon. And they are very generous, and uh, they give us lots and lots of dollars. So we're more or less remittance addicted, yeah. which is not necessarily a good thing. And um, so we pray to the Virgin and uh, strangely enough, it all sorts of works. This year, for example, we set up the first Nora Honora statue, and it was based on Himala, yes. which is also Milagrosa. That's so right. uh, yeah. these sand dunes, matagal nang iniiyakan ng mga farmers. I mean, there's nothing that you can cultivate. There are no crops that will grow in sand. There's no water. There's no soil. Not. There's no nothing. Yeah. And uh, the fishermen also had uh, no a uh, way of getting fish in this extremely windy and uh, dusty place. But it turns out that, in fact, the uh, sand dunes that we were all crying over are a sandbox where everyone can play, do all sorts of sports, Brilliant. all kinds of art and yeah. creative uh, leisure activities. So it's become a really fun place to go to. You turned it so, around. So yeah. um, big a... thanks to Nora Honor also. So this big is the th Elsa statue. Honor. That's the Elsa statue because the Himala movie turned things around for yeah. so many of us yeah. in the Pauai area. 
Um, and what we thought was a wasteland was in fact a giant sandbox yeah. for everyone to play, yeah. to enjoy, to be creative. Yeah. And uh, strangely enough, yung Himala, kantarini bamboo. So it all sort of worked. Uh, bamboo uh, also ran up to the, to the statue during his concert and sang Himala. Yes. And this is the recent concert, no last the le recent uh, concert. Yeah. And at the same time, we had Leroy New come over. Uh, he's sort of rock star of the sculpture world, mm -hmm. and he made an interactive uh, part out of all the junk, all the basura of the provincial engineering office. Yeah. So it was really fun because the kids were playing all over. Right. We also got to borrow the costumes of Lady Gaga. <laughs> Uh, that were made of plastic toys, so everyone was posing in them. Yeah. We, we tend to get too clever about all these tourism events. All everyone wants is just an opportunity to tweet some insane picture, to Instagram around the world, right. and to geoblog nonstop. So we're also learning that, you know. You're really you, making use of social media. You don't really need to, like, break your heads and come up with this extremely complicated, costly advertising campaign. Yeah. The kids will do it for you if maangas talaga yung images. Well, speaking of advertising campaigns, you've really done this on your own without the help of the Department of Tourism. Yeah, so that's sort of a initiative. sticky point. That's right. It's totally a local initiative. Um, actually, we, we launched the head of the DOT because they were taking so long, and I was getting nervouser and nervouser. What happened was that in the past, Ilocos Norte was dependent on China tourists coming over yeah. in uh, junket in uh, flights um, from the different cities in China. They'd come here strictly to gamble. And that was also the time when the flights direct to the China mainland were prohibited to Taiwanese nationals. Taiwanese were, in fact, the biggest investors, and yet they couldn't go and see their factories in China. They had to change plane. Mm -hmm. They changed plane in Hong Kong, which eventually became too expensive. They then changed plane in Macau. And then they discovered Lawal, which was infinitely cheaper. So yeah. they would just change plane here. One plane from Taiwan would come in. They'd cross down the tarmac, and then the other plane would take them to the mainland. And that's how it worked. And after a while, they realized they could stop over and not just walk on the mm -hmm. tarmac. And they could come and see Iloko. So yeah. that's how it worked back in the day. We lost that market because we've become so uncompetitive. Mm -hmm. Macau rose, uh, Singapore rose. And uh, as a result, it's yeah. been a wake-up call. So we're pushing for domestic tourism for the yeah. very first time. But it's a real boon mm -hmm. because fortunately, there are more Ilocanos in more countries yeah. in the world than there are members to the United Nations. There are, first <laughs> there are Ilocanos in every corner of the That's universe. Right. <laughs> so uh, they've been a real uh, marketing uh, campaign. Right. They are the real uh, pushy yeah. ones. Yeah. Well, I'd like and to ask you, you brought up grateful. the Chinese and Taiwanese um, tourists. Has this row between the Philippines and China affected tourism among the Chinese? Yeah, you know, the reality is it's been very tough for us because um, Taiwan and the Chinese islands are very, very nearby. Yes. Um, for us, when we turn on uh, the radio, for example, in Pagudpud, it's in Mandarin. Um, oh it's only 400 uh, kilometers to Kaohsiung. It's right. 550 kilometers to Metro Manila. Right. So, oh. Oh. naturally, and uh, it's in Mandarin. So, it should have been our primary market. Uh, it continues. Um, through the charters of the uh, junket operations, mm -hmm. but uh, the widespread mainstream tourism is not really coming over. Right. So that's a real shame because that's the biggest market in the world. Um, yeah. We've also had very little help from the DOT in that sense, so it's all locally generated. Yeah. I have to plague all my locals to help yeah. us all the time. Yeah. Uh, well, the, you are a genius in communications and in coming well, up with a lot of I don't know about that. I think we got really lucky. Um, there are uh, so many budget flights this, these days, yeah. and um, the unfortunate tragedies of Visayan weather mm -hmm. have really pushed people to Luzon. Natatakot ng tao pumunta sa Malayo eh, uh -oh. sa Visayas kasi kinakabahan sa sunod-sunod na bagyo. So, eto nga. Uh, in the meantime, we've also made an effort to push for uh, new tourism, mm -hmm. meaning uh, 
Siyempre, yung classic Northern Luzon tourism are the heritage, the churches. Right. Right. Um, if you make it to the rice terraces, yan din yung mga cordillera. Mm. So we've tried to push forward from that. Uh, Unang-una yung sports tourism. Yes. Yung, um, uh, malaki yun eh, yung sports and adventure. Talagang a lot of Lakas leisure activity. Lakas ng hangin dito sa so windsurfing. Lakas ng windsurfing. Uh, we have lots and lots of windsurfers. Coming from Europe and overseas, I don't hmm. really know how they hear about it, but they say it's uh, Maui in Hawaii uh, wow. 20, 30 years ago. So yeah. it sounds fun. Yeah. We have, of course, we've now become the nation of zip lines, and we have yes. one that's solid all over water, 1.6 uh, kilometers. So it's massive. Yeah. And um, we have all these wind and sand generated sports. Right. So it's, it's good fun because it's totally different. You've from got the coast, else. the territorial areas. Yeah. Uh, we haven't the, really support. explored too much of the mountains. Uh, two thirds of Ilocos North is all mountain. Mm. But the mountain bikers have been going up to Sulsona Apayao. They've been going up to Adams. And many people have now discovered the Tingyan tribal yes. village in that's Nueva right. Era. Yeah. And I think that's going to be uh, more and more important. Uh, some have inquired, in fact, about tribal weddings, which is uh, mm. interesting because that is puro heritage weddings oh. like my uh, nephew Luis Araneta and Sandra Rocha. They got married in Sarat yeah. and it was gorgeous because the church is an old one. Ngayon, nag-push forward na rin. Meron na mga bago yung mga tribal. Meron rin mga green weddings. So we're really open to do that because um, we have a lot of beaches. We even have a chapel, La Milagrosa yeah. Chapel on the beach, which yeah. is immensely photogenic and cinematic. Yeah. So you're bound to have a really pretty wedding. And um, we can guarantee the food miles, which means that everything's grown yeah. uh, in Ilocos Norte. We can even guarantee the handloom uh, textiles yes. uh, because Beautiful we are fabric, doing a lot innovative. of that here. Yeah. So um, it would be interesting options for uh, unique weddings. Yeah. So we're pushing for that also because um, people uh, want more and more unique right. uh, experiences. Well, you know, a true Ilocano knows his roots and his culture. And because he knows his roots and his culture, he always takes care of everything that he has. Anyway, this is the only province that we have, so why don't we love it? Once the Ilocano rises in the morning, he thinks about his land, he thinks about being frugal, he thinks about planting this so that tomorrow he will have something to eat. And he is so independent that he does not even rely on buying anything from, from elsewhere, even especially from Manila. But then the Ilocano was not attracted to Manila. He stayed here, he tilled his land, he did everything, despite the hot weather, despite the harsh uh, land and everything else. But he became self-reliant. Middle Eastern countries like Morocco and Dubai are famous for their natural sand dunes. Fortunately, we don't have to travel that far to see such amazing beauty. In the Philippines, adventure-seeking travelers travel up north for a thrilling taste of 4x4 riding and sandboarding right here in the Pauai sand dunes. Here in the Philippines, adventure-seeking tourists travel up north to experience the thrill of 4x4 riding and sandboarding on the Pauai sand dunes. But there's more to this natural wonder than just a short-lived adventure. Movie directors here and abroad have been drawn to the Ilocos Sands. Governor Aimee Marcos is a fiery presence on any stage, always determined to excel to get the job done. No doubt, her extensive studies and experiences in theater, acting, writing, and film prepared her well for a stellar role on the political stage. Aimee Marcos studied acting and playwriting at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. She is one of the first female graduates from Ivy League School Princeton University in the USA, graduating with honors thereafter. She is a noted theater, TV, and film producer responsible for children's shows Kulit Bulilit and Kaluskus Musmos. As Director General of the Experimental Cinema of the Philippines in the 80s, she produced some of the country's best films, including Oro Plata Mata <laughs> and Himala. <laughs> she 
She has collaborated with top directors Marilu Diaz Abaya for the movie Brutal, Peke Galiaga for Scorpio Nights, and Tikoy Aguiluz for The Boatman. She also produced and wrote animations featuring Nonoy Marcelo's Daril Makoy and Lam Ang, among others. In 2007, Aimee Marcos established the Creative Media and Film Society of the Philippines, or CREAM, a production company that specializes in animation, game, and film production, of which she is president. Through this group, Aimee Marcos's pet project, Pintakasi, an indie film that combines live action and animation, won an award for Best Multimedia Film in the 2011 Metro Manila Film Fest. Ilocos Norte is a popular location for the local and foreign film industry. Famous Hollywood films shot here are Born on the Fourth of July, Platoon, and Mad Max. Among the local movies filmed here are the Panday film series, Chito Ronyo's musical Emir, and Temptation Island. But Ilocos Norte is perhaps most notable for Ishmael Bernal's Himala, which was filmed entirely in this northern province in just three weeks. Recently, a sculpture of the lead character Elsa, played by Nora Honor, was erected on the Pauay sand dunes to pay tribute to this cult classic. Governor Aimee Marcos believes the movie industry is a boon to Ilocos Norte, the best form of advertising and exposure for her province. She authored a provincial ordinance, the Tri-Media Incentives Act in Ilocos Norte, that provides filmmakers and movie producers with incentives to facilitate production activities and minimize costs. This is yet another way that Governor Aimee Marcos is setting the stage for Ilocos Norte's bright future by bridging arts, culture, and politics. What is the future for Ilocos Norte and Philippine film? Let's find out from the governor who has a shared passion for both public service and the arts. So very photogenic area you have. Also, that's why a lot of directors have been attracted to, to this yes. area. No? That's actually what came first. I think uh, even before tourism, we were getting yeah. a lot of free media mileage yeah. simply because people would come over um, and start shooting shows. Right. And uh, there would be international shows, and then we'd get MTVs, and then we'd get all sorts of other shows. But historically, Matagal ng location ng Ilocos Norte. Kaya lang we're always the stand-in for someone else. Middle Eastern like, country. Like uh, the Patapat, for example, um, is always in the car and motorcycle ads. Right. Uh, pretending to be the Italian Riviera, but oh. it's actually somewhere between Ilocos and Cagayan. And that's the same case with uh, the windmills yes. that have been uh, the stand-in for California somewhere. Or Scandinavia, and Denmark. And um, we have the same... Yeah. Uh, the same story for uh, so many other places so yeah and you know the uh, movie industry is extremely superstitious and uh, film and tv say there are places na suerte may artista na patok mm. and i don't know for some reason uh, a lot of the films that came here really made lots and lots of money. Yeah. So Temptation Island was originally made here, yeah, became a cult classic, unintentionally hilarious. Yeah. It was remade and uh, the second film also made money. Yeah. So uh, Himala was made here, Born on the Fourth of July was made here. Um, a lot of the Vietnam movies were shot here, the first Mad Max. Yeah. Um, it goes on and on and yeah. uh, we're very proud of the cinematic history. Especially in the days of FPJ, when he would shoot the Pandai every single year. Yeah. So, naging sikat yung mga halimaw na nasa uh -oh. sand dunes. So, these are the things that uh, we like also about film and TV. We can't afford the advertising. So, coming out for two solid hours is uh, a real boon. Yeah. And it gives lots and lots of jobs because... The multiplier, the cascade of jobs. Yes. Uh, inevitably, they're going to hire caterers, van right. rental, helicopter rental. There's cast, yeah. there's crew, carpenters, costume, makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Lat lat na. Everyone uh, gets a piece of the pie. Yeah. So. Uh, so would we you love say it. that's helping to keep more Ilocanos here? Because a lot of them tend to migrate. Yes, that's to the real places. challenge to so uh, have the jobs, jobs here. Yeah. We've been growing at a tremendous rate, uh, 12 percent plus plus. Mm -hmm. So the boom's not merely in tourism, but uh, in uh, real estate, yeah. in um, transport, in communications. Yes. There's been a real boom in the province. Um, I think.
think, uh, as I said, the uh, OFWs and the migrants have been sending all this yeah. money in. But uh, right now, the challenge really is to create uh, jobs here and secondly, to convert all this consumeritis and shopping in the mall that's corrupting a very stingy and uh, austere Ilocanos, <laughs> Ilocanos into right. consumers. Yeah. So sana, the consumers will become investors yeah. and really invest. So I'm beginning to see a little bit of that. There's um, some uh, retirement interest, tourism yeah. interest, yeah. and uh, that's very yeah. good. But the young kids, we're hopeful that uh, the call center business right. will uh, broaden and that agriculture will pick up with packaging yeah. Yeah. and processing yeah. and so on. Well, let's talk another about another area that's also gaining a lot of investment. You're very interested in film. Film yeah. and the arts. So you have um, a degree. Uh, you've, you've studied extensively on film, and you even formed Cream, which is the Creative Media and Film Society. Yes, the that's right. Yeah, yeah. Tell us more I, about I've that been and doing, where it's going. I've been doing film for a long, long time, long yeah. before it was fashionable. We used to call it experimental cinema of the Philippines, yes. and a lot of uh, stalwarts uh, derived from there. So um, I have a particular affinity to film. Uh, we produced Himala, Oro Plata Mata, yes, and uh, quite a few of those other uh, movies. In uh, the period that's now called the golden age of film, it's quite mm -hmm. interesting. We never thought we were golden anything <laughs> at the time. We thought we were just a bunch of uh, crazy people getting to Doing do what, what we like to do. Yeah. In fact, it was really depressing. We brought all sorts of fancy movies to Cannes. And in the end, uh, despite the awards, the film that won um, and uh, got the contracts was Wang Wang. I distinctly <laughs> remember that. It was a real, it was a real eye opener. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, in any case, uh, film's been uh, very good to Ilocos Norte, yeah. so we're very lucky for that. Um, we're trying to bring more graphic arts, more digital, more right. of that stuff here. Um, I think because also of the migrant population, a lot of uh, the kids are really online, mm -hmm. very, uh, very non-analog, really pushing for interactive. So yeah. uh, the generation of content is really going to be important. I'm not really interested in snooty art films. It's really not uh, something that I want to get into. I, uh, I much prefer art that's actually public, that's accessible, that's loved by the community. So uh, we, we, we like to do community projects. We like to uh, fix community mm -hmm. art. We do design charrettes on the floor and make mayors and policemen mm. draw what they would like to see in their town. Yeah. It's, a, it's a consultative process and a process that um, I don't like to see uh, you know, fancy paintings that no one looks at yeah. and uh, million dollar museums. Our uh, museums here, we like to treat as blockbuster museums. How do you do I mean, that? I like, like to yeah. uh, make sure that there's popular stuff, we allow photographs, and that the, chi the children can play. Right. Uh, it's very, very important that they get involved with the exhibits. Yes. And uh, sometimes in Manila, they don't believe us when we show them our museum numbers, no? hmm. 30,000, 6,000 a day. Uh -oh. um, Champagne, in Manila, the museums don't get that crowded. Yeah. But here we make sure that uh, tourists come in. I'm, I'm not at all about snobby museums. Yeah. And uh, I don't see the point if no one's going right. to come in. Sand dunes, according to my father, who studied this, these are sand coming from the sea, brought by the strong waves. But, you know, since the contour of the place is not flat, it's hilly. So when the sand that is brought to the shore is, becomes dry, then the wind carries them towards the east. And it has covered a lot of rolling hills. The enterprising Ilocano, or the entrepreneurs, thought of saying, why don't we bring tourists to, to this place? And this time, you will, you will notice, huh? those who come to Lawag, adventurers or not, they always go and visit the, the sand dunes. Not maybe perhaps always for 4x4 for for or sunboarding, but they come to the sand dunes to watch the beautiful sunset from the West Philippine Sea.
was it like growing up in the Marcos family? I mean, at a, when you're yeah, I think it's a real challenge because yeah. um, both my parents were were so uh, were so energetic and uh, so hardworking. It was also lonely because they were always away. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, they pushed really hard for genuine excellence. Yeah. And my father was really rigorous about. Um, getting everything analyzed and really accurate. And my mother, on the other hand, was extremely creative, always has been, yeah. um, had the most fascinating mad friend. And um, you met everyone. You were in the loop on everything. Yeah. So This is probably your earliest exposure to arts and culture, huh? So she was very much into it. Yeah, my mother is very, very interested. And my father had so many writer friends. So yeah. uh, uh, I think they shared that. Um, it was always uh, quite interesting. Yeah. Well, you were in London a lot of it when you were growing up. You did your schooling also in London. So you were away when a lot of the political turmoil Yeah, I spent a great time, uh, a great deal of time away. But I come from a very political family. So, um, you know, there's 200 plus years on my mother's side mm -hmm. and almost 200 years on my dad's side. Yeah. So um, can't really get away from That's it. It's almost true. congenital. Yeah. But um, I'm the one who's always been trying to escape. My sister has done it successfully. She's not been in politics forever. More the socialite, maybe? Mm, not really. She's yeah. not very. She's right. not that social. She yeah. she she just doesn't run for office. Yeah. Um, and for your brother, when Bong Bong ran in 2010, you were behind his electoral campaign. Mm, you were actually. I'm not so sister. sure about that. I wasn't that much behind it because I became a candidate myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to run for governor here suddenly. What, what, what do you think made it successful for whether it was your campaign or what did you try to do to really get the people um, uh, interested in your, whether it was yours or you, you helped Bong Bong? We did try to formulate a campaign that's very much like him. Right. I think people talk too much these days about branding and packaging mm -hmm. and all this stuff. But I think at the end of the day, the um, campaign needs to have truth, mm -hmm. uh, has to be... Uh, truthful to the candidate. It uh, needs to look like the product. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't just be a fancy slogan and some yeah. groovy songs. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So uh, it really has to be truthful. And my brother's very laid back. He's a very chill sort of guy. He's not the typical type A hypermanic <laughs> politician. Like you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm much more hyper father. ADHD than he is. <laughs> He's very chill, very easygoing. Yeah. And we wanted a campaign that reflected that. It would also be very anti-politician. And we know for a fact that, uh, by and large, in general, the public doesn't like politicians at all. <laughs> the less you yeah. look political, the better they like you. Yeah. So we tried to just put up an ad. And it, it actually ended up having very funny comments because he was walking down and very breezy in this sort this of uh, linen shirt in the windmills by the beach. And people were asking exactly what's this ad selling, <laughs> which was a good question because it wasn't really pushing for anything. Yeah. It was just showing my brother uh, in Ilocos Norte where renewable energy the had Bumby become a uh, campaign for all of us. Yeah. We're really pushing hard for renewables. And we now have much bigger windmill projects coming. They're the biggest investment, right. not tourism at all. It's really all about renewables. We're committed to the clean and green. so. We're yeah. reviving all the um, hydro as well as the solar projects, and hopefully mm -hmm. we get approvals on all those. But the wind is uh, up and running, yeah. so uh, we used it. We used it, but very, very subliminally and mm -hmm. anti-politician in every way because it's such a turn-off when you get heavy-handed, keep jabbering yeah. away about all sorts of stuff. Uh, but big catch people are now. very smart these days. Yeah. You, it really you doesn't work them. to just keep... Uh, Forcing things That's down right. their throat. You recently right. renovated the Ferdinand Marcos Museum. Where there's there are a lot of three, actually. There's so okay. many now. There's a place yeah. where he was born. The yeah. Marcos Trail is really patok. My family yeah. has been sort of in denial about it. We were really like not certain whether we should open the houses or not. But people kept demanding to open them. So we have to open them. Right. And it's actually been a, a good experience. People are sometimes saying that it's revisionist history. But yeah. in fact, Quite controversial. here in Ilocos Norte, my dad's just a homeboy. <laughs> a uh, homeboy, okay. He's just somebody that they knew and yeah. grew up with and loved. 
Yeah. So the uh, political issue is not clear at all. Yeah. And then he did well. He became president forever and ever. Yeah. So uh, well, it said that for you us here, yeah. it's not a political statement. We're right. not revising anything. We're yeah. just telling uh, everyone the story or our children the story that the stories that we knew. Yeah. So uh, there's a place where he was born and where all the ladies weave. And yeah. there's his classroom where he was grade one with a giant ant. Yeah. Because there's a story to that too. And then there's the politi political house, which is Bata. Right. And yeah. finally, there's the Malacanang of the North, which is on Pawai Lake, where he spent gloves of time when he was yeah. already in yeah. uh, Malacanang. So it became Malacanang of the North because they'd have cabinet meetings right. and all that stuff there. Yeah. So well, of course, there is the great story of how your father and mother met. There's a nice exhibit on that. In the oh, that's museum. in Batak about yes. the 11-day courtship. Right. I know. Uh, we think romantic. we're really modern today, <laughs> but I think that's yeah. way more modern. Yeah. That's almost uh, Instagram marriage. So it was so. happening a lot. Well, I read somewhere your mother was quite upset. There are no women grandchildren, so no one's going to inherit the shoes. They're all boys. You <laughs> know, my mom's not especially interested in shoes. She was at that time pushing Marikina and uh, the uh, export processing centers because yeah. we were we were the very first to push for business for outsourcing of Nike, mm. in Bataan, for Adidas, Puma, all these right. brands at that time. Um, my mother's actually much more interested in jewelry than in shoes. That so too. It's totally a mistake. Well, how do you feel about working with your mother? Your mother, you said it's your, father, your brother, and then, of course, Imelda Marcos is still in... Yeah, my mother and I are partners now because uh, she's a congresswoman, what I used to be in the second district. So she works in Congress and I'm here in the province. Uh, I was congressman representing that district forever and ever. So um, politically, we get on very, very, very well. Politically. Uh, yeah, yeah, we come to the same conclusion. I'm usually very boring and rational or try to be, where she's very instinctive and... Uh, we always come to the same conclusion somehow. Usually she's much quicker than I am, but that's another story. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's fun. I mean, it's like coming home. Right. We grew up with so many of the people, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, they, you know, they complain about us all the time because, uh, well, they compare us to our parents, and yeah. we're simply not good enough. Yeah. So uh, my parents are really committed, and we are too, but I suppose everyone comes to a different style. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different generation. Yeah. I like to think we're more consultative. Mm -hmm. The Ilocano society is very male dominated mm -hmm. on its surface, but in fact the mothers and the Ilocanos are very strong willed. Yeah. So um, I think in the beginning there was some kind of tension about yeah. being ordered around by this female. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, I think they got used to it. Yeah, and I don't necessarily order people around so much except when they're really, really wrong. No, Women know how <laughs> but, to get things done. But I think it's a more consultative approach, yes. and uh, we try to listen more. A big part of it was manifested uh, in the space. Mm -hmm. A big uh, thing for my first two years in office was just tearing down fences, yes. literally. Uh, we broke down and demolished miles and miles of fence here in Lawag City, in Ilocos Norte, took out all the fences in the capital. Yeah. Uh, it's very old fashioned having all these silly fences. Yeah. After 9-11, we all learned that this wasn't security right. uh, because it's very easy for bad guys to hide behind big fences. In fact, it's much better to have all the eyeballs looking in and checking out what's going 100%. on. So well, if we um, may talk about no, a figurative tearing of the fences now, we cannot get away from the fact that the Marcos name is associated with some of the dark times in the Philippines. How have you torn down fences in terms of um, dealing with that? Well, um, I think uh, history is changing. Um, not because we're revising it, or uh, editing or pretending things that didn't happen. But I think overall it's very, very clear. Uh, people talk to me nostalgically mm. about uh, the days past. History. People are always uh, nostalgic about uh, the Marcos era. And there's a great deal of, um, yeah, there are a lot of surveys now that uh, surprise me where people say, that despite all the media, despite all the uh, bashing that yeah. occurred after EDSA, um, people keep voting my dad as the best president. Mm. 
that the Philippines had. So yeah. I think people have become more curious and uh, more rigorous in their mm -hmm. thinking. And all these uh, manufactured notions um, have not been accepted. Yeah. And in fact, uh, a lot of kids are researching, studying. In a 20 year period, inevitably there are mistakes. I think yeah. uh, they're unintentional and they're not um, policy, but uh, certainly uh, there's yeah. been a lot of curiosity, a lot of research and interest. And um, I'm hopeful that yeah. Uh, one day a compromise that will be good for everyone yeah. will finally allow this nation to push forward. Yeah. Uh, getting mired in the past doesn't allow you to move on. And I think the time has come for the Philippines. We've had a bit of a push with the Southeast Asian miracle. It's really important that uh, as a nation we push forward and um, yeah. get our act together and reconcile with everyone and just move on. Right. Just carrying on about the 60s and the 70s and then the 80s and the 90s and blaming everyone that yeah. came before you. It's boring. You can't live in the past. I mean, yeah. seriously, yeah. we just need to move forward. Yeah. Well, let's talk about you now. I mean, again, falling in love again, of course. You're married again now. I mean, what was long it Long time like? now. I said, it's been a long time, of course. I mean, in terms of your personal life, how do you find the time to, you know, to, for downtime when you're so busy with your schedule, shuffling back and forth between Manila? Yeah, the traveling is really difficult. The traveling is really difficult. Uh, because my kids, my husband's not from here, mm -hmm. and then my kids are in Manila mostly are traveling, so... Uh, it's a bit of a stretch. How we just balance? grab time to get uh, together yeah. and don't sleep well, yeah. don't eat well, <laughs> do everything that they tell you, but well, not well. Uh, you are so, on. so successful in everything you do. So if we may yeah, ask. I'm not so sure about that. I don't think so. I, I so humble. Know. But really, in everything, I mean, in everything you've excelled, you're always graduating with honors in all your schoolwork. But what do you... No, I'm just nerdy. <laughs> I don't know about good uh, to be nerdy. success. I what don't know about success. I like school. Well, in terms of so balancing. So it's easy for me. Oh, yeah. and it's important to always keep learning, which you continue to do, right, in everything you do. How do you make sure that you are, what, what do you do to make sure you're successful both in your personal life, your career? No. What is it that keeps you going? I, I'm not fixated on success. People keep telling me to go for higher office, for national office, but I'm not really that interested in politics. I... Uh, had to run in Ilocos Norte because of family reasons, because there was so much trouble. But um, I enjoy being here. It's good fun. Yeah. It's curious. Local government, I find, allows someone who is fundamentally a creative person to operate much better. Uh, the dry dust of lawmaking, which is the business of Congress, mm -hmm. doesn't in many ways allow you to do very much creative work. But here in the province, um, being a local government official, being a hands-on executive allows you, or in fact requires you, to innovate. Because there's so many age-old problems like poverty, malnutrition, all these old, old problems that if you didn't think out of the box or even jump out of the box, um, they would never get solved because yeah. they've not been solved for centuries. Yeah. So we are always thinking of new ways to do things. And I think that at the end of the day, it's not so different from making a film. Yeah. At the end of the day, para kang gumagawa ng pelikula na araw-araw may bagong problema, kailangan lutasin mo. Tama. Eh, kulang yung ilaw. Uh, <laughs> wala yung director. Kulang ng budget. Yung, uh, yung uh -oh. artista. It's sort of the same thing dito sa metaphor. local government. Um, in a funny way, I'm discovering that you don't have enough policemen, one of your mayors has decided not to perform, and uh, your health care continues to be lacking. Mm. So if you don't think of new ways, you're never going to be able to respond to all the people's needs. Right. So that's the reason I think that it allows for a great deal of creativity, of innovation, of new thinking. And um, I found it very satisfying on that end, even if it's really 24-7 and not very good for a uh, uh, vibrant family life. You're a workaholic, but balancing it very well, huh? <laughs> seems. Um, 
I don't think I'm a workaholic, but uh, people say I work very long hours. I just want to get it done. Yeah, I, uh, that's just important. You get, deliver. Um, on your I commitments. just get very uh, tired of waiting around. Yeah. I'm always in a big rush, yeah. which is not so good. Um, in my next life, I will be given patience, but until <laughs> then, I'm just who I am. It's I'm difficult. I'm in a mad rush. Yeah. Well, what is it that you would like to be remembered for? What would you say your legacy? Oh, I'm not intending on dying very soon. <laughs> and I think legacy projects um, are always trouble. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think at the end of the day, it's not that you built all these humongous, uh, useless white elephant things. But more importantly, it's really touching people's lives. I'm very, very concerned about um, providing uh, quality education, uh, good jobs, supporting yes. families that have been separated by uh, jobs overseas. Uh, this is the real uh, job of governance, yeah. of uh, taking care of people, rather than all these uh, so-called legacy projects that are a little bit comical sometimes. That's how our public servants should be. Wonderful um, insight there. Well, moving forward, we speak with a future generation, so let's talk about your son. Michael is my middle son. He, yes. just, he just finished law. Yeah. Right. So how do you feel about them working? Well, I didn't want them to be a lawyer. <laughs> Why not? Uh, because uh, the justice system, unfortunately, is uh, a very troubled system and mm. I didn't want him to be um, completely crushed yeah. uh, by the reality of practicing. But he was determined to do it and um, he's finished so I'm mm. delighted. Morgan's taken after you in terms of film, you know, he's into the film arts. He was modeling because it paid so well mm. and then he moved into retail very quickly. He mm. likes to sell shoes and I think he wants to design stuff now yeah. so let's see what happens. Yeah. Uh, it's really a problem. Sumikat na masyadong maaga And then uh, Michael's my second son. He's now a lawyer in CSIP. Mm -hmm. And I, my third son is Matthew, who's uh, wanting to be the Filipino Jerry Maguire. Really? And handling Sports, PBA yeah. um, basketball players and yeah. some other athletes. Yeah. So I hope he makes a go of that because um, he's inventing not just a new business, but a whole industry. Yeah. If there's something that really changed you about being in government, what would it be? Because this is a tough job. I think we're a little bit too high and mighty in Congress. And I don't say that referring to the congressmen today, but to myself when I was in Congress. We thought we knew all the answers. And it was always some great, uh, groovy new policy. In fact, many of the solutions can be provided by the people on the ground themselves if you only listen. So uh, I'll a great deal of local government is listening. I think you just have to listen to everyone because good ideas come from them. Many of the solutions are best known by the farmers and the fishermen. And uh, sometimes they're really, really simple and they get the job done. Yeah. So um, I think there's a level of humility and, and modesty that you learn from working with people on the ground. Yeah. And it's very interesting, mostly uh, people are, uh, many politicians begin in local government and then go to national. I never wanted to be in local government. So it's sort of a big education for me to come here. The culture change is massive. Uh, but having said that, um, I find it far more satisfying than many of the years I spent in Congress. Yeah. Well, very well said. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much, Governor Ivy Marcos. Thank you for your time. We cap off our trip to Ilocos Norte with a visit to the famous Bangui windmills. The Bangui wind farm is made up of 20 turbines that make up a graceful arc of rotating blades along this 9-kilometer stretch of Bangui Bay. This fusion of technological and natural elegance has helped reduce carbon emissions significantly and has led to huge savings in electricity costs. It also attracts thousands of tourists each year. With openness to modern technology, sustainable development, and the creation of new opportunities, coupled with a deep awareness of their strength as a people and a strong woman at the helm, Ilocos Norte is poised to be a success story to watch and learn from. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Thanks for watching News Cafe.